Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we are making a walnut picture frame with oak splines, a fairly simple joint that goes together relatively easy. And we're gonna be having a lot of fun with that. This, I'm gonna be framing my certificate from the Midwest Tool Collectors Association. It is the best place to buy hand tools. And so one of the questions I'm always gonna ask, where do you get all your hand tools? Most of them from the Midwest Tool Collectors. I'll leave a link to them down below, but that's enough talking for right now. Let's dive into the project. This build is gonna start with some walnut. I love working with walnut. It is a fantastic hand tool wood. The first thing I wanna do is true up the edges, make sure that everything is copacetic, 90 degrees, flat and smooth. It's a good chance to bring in the smoothing plane and really play with it. Getting some nice thin curls and this walnut, it's just, it's a happy time. Uh, walnut is such a fantastic wood to work with. Now on this frame, I'm gonna make a couple different beads on one side and then a 45 degree chamfer on the other. So to create the beads, I'm gonna use my Stanley number 55. This could also be done with a 45 or a beading plane, uh, but this one has a double bead iron so I can actually put two beads right along the side, setting it up so that the last bead rounds right over the edge. And look, I have a new rabbit plane we're gonna be using here in a minute. <laughs> so once I have the beads done, I'm gonna come in with a card scraper and clean them up a little bit. Uh, often with the iron, we'll nick a little bit of the side and we'll create this tiny little shoulder off the side of the bead. With a card scraper, you can clean that up and get rid of any of the wisps or problems you might have had with the iron. A great tool, and if you want one, I have them for sale on my website. The next thing I want to do is create a rabbit in the opposite corner. This rabbit will be what houses the picture and the glass. It's about a quarter inch by about a quarter inch. And using a rabbiting plane with a shoulder and a depth stop just makes things so much easier to run that down the line. Get a nice clean line. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Great little curls that come off of this that just... They act like little springs. Hmm. Happiness. Uh, I don't know if you can tell this, but I, I like hand tool woodworking, especially with walnut. But once I have that rabbit created on one corner, then I can go back to the other corner on the front face and put in a chamfer. I'm going to be putting a 45 degree chamfer that comes in a quarter inch and then down a quarter inch. I'm going to use a marking gauge to mark off lines at a quarter inch in and a quarter inch down. And then I'm going to grab my scrub plane, and this will allow me to take off a lot of material very quickly, getting close to those lines. A scrub plane is a plane with a cambered iron. I have a video showing how to set that up if you'd like to see that as well. But it takes off a lot of material very quickly, very easily. Leaves it kind of rough, but oh well. Then I can come in with a smoother and take it down to those lines. And spending a little bit of time with the smoother to do it accurately, to do it well, makes everything very, very happy. With a little bit of time, you can get these nice, clean curls and then bring everything down to that line. And in some cases, that means you have to spend a little more time in one spot than another. But in the end, you have a nice profile. Next, we wanna actually start making the frame. Now that we have a stick about four foot long, I'm gonna use the bench hook to make most of the cuts. I have slices in there at 45 that get them fairly close, but they don't get them close enough for a picture frame. The next thing I wanna do is use a shooting board. And I'll actually use a speed square along my 90 degree shooting board to make it much easier to get that 45 degree angle. That way I don't have to have a, a separate shooting board just for 45s. I can do it all in one very easily. Now that I have them cut at 45 and I know they're nice and true, I'm gonna show you another way that I often do it. And that is with a miter shear. So I, once I get them close to the line, then I can put this miter shear on there and get a really nice clean line. It just, it's a, it's a joy to use get these fantastic curls off there. It works basically exact ways as a shooting board, it just takes a lot of material off much faster. It's set up, it's easier, and a lot of professional picture shops use a uh, miter trimmer rather than a shooting board. <laughs> now we can test it, make sure that everything is just the way it needs to be. If there's any bit of change that needs to happen, I'll usually just do a little trimming with a block plane, getting it closer to the angle. Just make sure that if you do it to one corner, you also do it to the opposite corner. That way the whole frame slides together. If you just do it to one corner, then they never quite fit. And then we got it exactly the way we want it. Nice tight corners, 90 degrees all the way around, and uh, ready to start joining it. I'm gonna be using some tight bond two to set this up. Uh, really at this point, the glue does not matter that much because we're gonna be putting in splines. And I'm just going to glue it up and use a picture frame clamp. Uh, these make things so much easier. The strap can go around it and the blocks hold everything in place. And then you can just tighten it up. It's very important though to take your time. Make sure that all the corners actually line up on the corner rather than sliding a little bit. And once that's all done, 
clean up the glue squeeze out. A wet rag will help you get rid of most of it as long as you also then dry off the dry area. And then you can use a straw to get into the tight corners. Uh, those cheap disposable straws work better, but I couldn't find them, so I ended up using one of the kids. Um, don't tell them. <laughs> Once that's all in clamps, then we can set it aside, let it dry, and then come back to it a day later. Now that it is done, it's basically a picture frame. You could leave it here. You just have to be a little careful. The glue is not very strong on the end grain, and it might cause some problems in the future. So what I'm going to do is put in some splines. I have a mortising gauge set up to the uh, thickness of my mortising chisel, and I can put some lines down either side of the corner, about three-quarter inch to one inch down. And then I can come in with the dovetail saw, follow those lines right down to the, the bottom of their cut, and I'll basically have a 45 degree cut on the corner on either of those lines. Once I have that done, come in with a uh, chisel that I chose the width of the mortising marks and clean out the waste in between those two cuts. Chop in halfway from one side and then halfway from the other, that way you don't bust anything out. Clean it out so there's a nice flat surface on the bottom and the mortise is done and ready for a spline. For the spline, I'm gonna be using a couple pieces of oak and I'm just going to cut them to a rough size. I don't care about putting the angles on them right now, just to something that is much bigger than the actual opening. I'm going to be using a bit of high glue. Why high glue? Because it was here. <laughs> and I really like high glue. Um, I cut these fairly tight, and the high glue makes them slide together easier. It's just a, a good glue for this joint, and it's be far stronger than it needs to be. Once you finish one corner, flip it around and do the same thing again. Only three more times. <laughs> Once the glue is dried, then we can start cutting off the excess. I'll use a saw to get them close. Then I'll get them really darn close to the chisel, bringing everything into the line, working from the corner in towards the center, and then clean them up with a plane. A nice smoothing plane with a really finely set mouth and chip breaker makes this beautiful. And to clean up those joints in between makes it really, really nice. The last thing I want to do is actually go through it and detail it out because I have these grooves uh, from the rabbits. I want to clean them out with a knife and a small piece of sandpaper, bring everything into that final smoothness that I want it to be for the finish. Uh, don't diss the sandpaper. It's really useful, <laughs> especially in little things like this where you can bend it over and get into these corners. It gives you a really nice surface on there. For a finish, I'm doing my basic uh, boiled linseed oil and paste wax. Uh, because this will be sitting on the wall and won't have a whole lot of contact, there's no real need for a highly protective finish. And I love the way the boiled linseed oil and paste wax brings out the color of the walnut. I'm going to apply it on there and let it soak in, put on four more than it needs, and then let the uh, oil soak into the wood, come back a little while later, add more oil. I'll do that three or four more times until the wood stops so soaking up the oil. At that point, we can wipe off the excess and really start to see the color in this wood come through. Absolutely gorgeous, and I like the slight contract with, the contrast with the oak. Makes it very happy. After that, we'll apply paste wax, let that sit for a little while until it can harden up, and then we'll come in and buff off the paste wax with a rag. And the picture frame is, well, built. The last thing we need to do is actually install the picture and the hardware needed to hang it. So for the picture, I had some glass cut to the size it is. It ends up being an eighth inch larger than the picture because I don't have a mat to go with it. Clean it off nicely before putting it in because once it's in, it's much harder to clean. Then we can set in the picture and the backing, make sure that it is exactly where I want, and then I'm going to use some glazing points to lock it all into place. The glazing points go into this walnut fantastically. Uh, just slide right in with the screwdriver. I don't have to worry about messing with them or pounding with them. Uh, just really useful there. Last piece is a sawtooth hanger. Drive it in with a uh, hammer and it's about ready to hang. I am in love with how easy this is and the wall just makes it that much easier and a very enjoyable task. I'll use a simple cleat for hanging it on the wall. Drive it in at the right point, hang the picture up, and we're done. The picture is ready to view for years and years to come until I find something else to hang in that spot. So there you have it, a relatively simple project. Uh, it's a lot of fun, it takes some fiddling and you can get things together. You're not always gonna have the tightest joints on the back, I have a couple with some gaps. Oh well, you don't see them from the front, so that's what makes it happy. 
And with the splines, it's a fairly solid, strong joint that's not going to last you for a long time. So I'm looking forward to this being on my wall. If you ever watch any of the live videos that my wife and I do, you'll see this hanging on the wall behind her now. So I hope you like this project. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, that does help out the channel, so thank you for that. also want to say a huge thank you to patrons on Patreon. Those of you who have bought shirts and card scrapers, that is a huge help keeping this channel going. So thank you for that. Also, if you have any comments or questions, let me know down below, and I will get to as many as I possibly can. So that's about it for today. Until next time, have a wonderful day.